Hello friends, welcome to CS Tune. Today we are going to learn that how a Turing machine can act as an acceptor. So whenever we are talking about an acceptor, the first thing comes in our mind is a DFA. Because in DFA we talk about the acceptance of our string. Whenever we reach to our final state, we say that the string is accepted. And in case we are not able to reach our final state, then we say that the string is rejected. So, the best thing to learn over here is before learning a Turing machine as an acceptor, you must be clear about the concepts of DFA and how to create a DFA. Now, the objective of this video is to design a Turing machine that can accept or recognize all the strings containing at least one A. That means, in all the strings, there should be at least one A present, where summation is given to us as A comma B. That means the inputs provided to us is A comma B. Now, as we have already discussed many a times that a Turing machine is represented using six tuples. Capital Q is a set of states. Summation is the set of finite input symbols that is present on the infinite tape except from the blank symbol that is a hash. Gamma is the set of symbols on the infinite tape including the blank symbol hash. <coughs> Delta is a transition function and it can be represented in three ways in the form of a transition graph, in form of a transition function or using a transition table. In this example, we are going to use transition graph or transition diagram to, in order to represent delta. Q0 is the initial state of a Turing machine and H is the halt state of a Turing machine. Now, let's see what is the minimum string that must be accepted by this particular machine. So, the minimum string that can be accepted is a single A because it should contain at least one A but there is no restriction on the number of B. You can have 1B, 2B, 0B. Any number of Bs can be there. So, suppose there are no Bs. That means there are zero number of Bs. Then, in that case, the minimum string possible is a single A. And the other possible strings will be, it can start by a B and consist of a single A and then again a B. It can have double A, it can have BBA, ABBB, then AABB, any number of A's, any number of B's, in any order you can have any combination of A and B. But the only restriction is that there should be at least one A. Now, in order to design a Turing machine as an acceptor, the easiest solution is to first generate the DFA for this particular question. So, whenever you are asked to generate a Turing machine as an acceptor, you must first draw a DFA and then convert this DFA into your Turing machine. So, it would be very easy for you. Now, if we talk about a DFA, so as we already know that for generating a DFA, what we are going to see is we will generate for the minimum string. So, let's start now. Suppose, let's there is a state Q0. It should contain at least one A. Suppose, I am providing a A. Now, it is consisting of a single A. So, whenever I am reaching to the state Q1, the state Q1 will be my final state because I have accepted a single A in my string. So, this is the minimum DFA possible. Now, we need to provide all the other inputs for all the states because it is the requirement of the DFA that for each state, all the inputs must be considered. Now, if we consider the state Q0, so the input A is already considered. Now, let's talk about the input B. So, for keeping the B, we can loop the B over state Q0 because any number of Bs can be there in the starting. 
so you can have any number of b's in the starting now your string can start with a a and directly move to a state q1 or a string can start with a b and then it can read a a now let's talk about a state q1 so when we are on the state q1 we are reading two input symbols so the symbol a and symbol b so what we can do because there is no restriction on the other a's or b's or the order so there is no restriction on the order of a or b and there is no restriction that there should be more than 2a more than 2b like like this there is no other restriction there is only one restriction that is at least one a should be there and that restriction is satisfied by us so what we can do we can loop our a and b over the state q1 so this is the dfa that is generated for the machine that can accept all the strings containing at least one a so you can see the same dfa is given over here now we are on the state q0 reading a single a we can reach to the final state q1 that is minimum string is a now your string can start with any number of b's and then for moving to the final state you need to read a single a that means at least one a is required in order to reach to your final state once you have reached to your final state that means you have satisfied the minimum condition of having at least one a then you can have any number of a's any number of b's in any order so what we are doing we are providing a loop over here for a comma b so any number of a's and any number of b's can be accommodated in any order now we need to convert this dfa into a turing machine so in order to convert it into a turing machine for a turing machine we should uh, we should know two things the first thing is that whenever we are talking about the infinite tape and we read a symbol from the infinite tape we want to replace it by any other symbol so we need to replace it by any other symbol and then our read write head can move to any of the directions it can move to the left direction it can move to the right direction or it can move to no direction so these are the two points that has to be kept in mind in case you are not clear about these two points you can go back and watch our video on introduction to turing machine there you will find that what is a turing machine and what are its requirements so over here what we need to do now for replacement of a b in our infinite tape we don't want to replace it by any other thing we don't want to replace it by a blank we don't want to replace it by a a so we can replace it by a b so over here what we are doing we are replacing our b by b only and since i have already told you in my previous videos many a times that always our read write head is pointing to the right most non blank symbol so the right most non blank symbol in each and every input will be this one so the last non blank symbol will be our right most non blank symbol so whenever we are starting our machine from the right most non blank symbol we need to move towards the left direction in order to read the other content of our string so initially we are on the right most non blank symbol and once it is read we will move towards the left direction in order to move to the next input symbol on the infinite tape that's why b is replaced by b and the movement of direction is towards left now let's take an example suppose we want to have a string b a b a and let's say a so this is the string which is containing of 3 a's so 3 a is more than a single a that means this string should be accepted by our turing machine we are on the right most non blank symbol a so we are on the state q not and reading the right most non blank symbol a now a will be replaced by a only so what we are doing we are replacing this a by a and the movement of direction will be towards left 
so we are writing our l over here we are moving towards the left direction now we have reached to the state q1 once we have reached to the state q1 we are reading the second a now on reading the second a so again we uh, as we have provided in our dfa this loop was for a comma b so we can write it like this also a and under a we can write b so instead of writing a comma b you can have a b over here so this is what we are using over here so here a is replaced by a and movement is towards left then b is replaced by b and movement is towards left so we have used a comma b both now when a is read so a will be replaced by a and the movement of read right head will be towards the left direction now read right head is reading a b and b will be replaced by b and the movement of direction is towards left now it will read again a a a is replaced by a movement is towards left it will read b b is replaced by b again the movement is towards left once we have reached to the left then we are supposing that since there is nothing present then we can assume that there is a blank symbol that is our hash now the only difference between the dfa and the turing machine is that dfa has a final state but turing machine doesn't have any final state it has a halt state after which once you have reached to your halt state you cannot move further your turing machine will halt there it will stop any further processing however in case of a dfa if you have reached to the final state you can move further also and come back to your final state again so when we were on the state q1 we have assumed the same state as the final state and any number of a and b can be accommodated over here but if we consider the same state q1 as our halt state then on reaching the state q1 our turing machine would have halted we don't want to halt it on q1 because we want to read any number of a and any number of b so that's why we have to assume a new state as a halt state so once we have reached to our final state we need to have one more state as a halt state because in turing machine there is no concept of a final state that's why we are using a halt state now once we have reached to the blank symbol hash and we are on the state q1 then we can move to the halt state saying that our string is accepted and this hash will be replaced by hash there is no requirement to move in the left or right direction so we can use n n is for no movement your read right head will be on hash only so once we have reached to the halt state we can say the string is accepted and this is the turing machine that is generated for have uh, for accepting all the strings consisting of a single a at least one a so at least one a we have generated a turing machine now as i have already told you that a turing machine is represented using six tuples so this is one tuple that is our delta now we need to find out other five tuples so capital q is the set of states in turing machine there are three states q0 q1 h so these are the set of state capital q q0 q1 h in case we are talking about dfa then there will be only two states q0 and q1 but for turing machine there are three states summation is the input symbol on the infinite tape except from hash so we have two input symbols a b and a so a and b in the order we can write a comma b and hash is not included in summation now the other is your gamma that is the symbols on the infinite tape along with the blank symbol hash so gamma consists of all the symbols on the infinite tape a comma b and the hash is also included in gamma in our state in our case the initial state is q0 so q0 is equal to q0 and halt state is h so h is equal to h only so in this way whenever you are asked to generate any acceptor for a turing machine you can generate a dfa and convert it easily into a turing machine that would be much easier thanks for watching our video in case of any queries please leave a comment in the comment section below
Stay tuned for further videos. Please like and subscribe our channel CS Tunes. Thank you.